This one do. No, 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 you can't say that. Look, I miss you like crazy. Maybe we should get away together? <laughs> okay. Let me surprise you. Aww. I love you more. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, um, yeah, of course. So, if you set the date for the meeting, then we can, then we can sit and talk. All right, uh, of course, I'll give you a call tomorrow. All right, good night. Thanks. Another gig? You know, I told you that being here gives me the clarity to think. Mm. Yeah, I mean, I'm not going to stop arranging to make you and SJ comfortable. <laughs> Oh, so if Mohammed will not go to the mountain, then the mountain will come to Mohammed's. I'm so indecisive. I'm so indecisive. Chapter 2 The Mythology. Here are some things abused women have said to Bancroft. He's crazy. He feels so bad about himself, I just need to build up his self-image a little. He just loses it. He's so insecure. His mother abused him and now he has a grudge against women and he takes it out on me. I'm so confused. I don't understand what's going on with him. What do a magician and an abuser have in common? They both trick you into looking in the wrong direction, distracting you so you won't notice where the real action is. So these tricks to keep you from looking in the right place include shaping your view of his past partners and relationships. They actively work to keep you from talking to the exes directly and prepare you to disbelieve them should you ever speak. It's because they know if you spoke, you'd see the pattern of his conduct. Let's talk about the many myths abusers have made up and shared throughout our culture. Bancroft has this fun exercise he suggests. Pause and write down everything you have ever heard or believed about where an abuser's problem comes from. Then we debunk those origin stories one at a time. So if you want to play, pause and do the tiny exercise. You'll enjoy it, I guess. What reasons have you heard about why men are abusive? What reasons have you heard about why men are abusive? Cool. Bancroft goes over 17 myths about abusers. How many have you heard and worse, believed? Don't worry, everyone has at least one. One, he was abused as a child. Two, his previous partner hurt him. Three, he abuses those he loves the most. Four, he holds in his feelings too much. Five, he has an aggressive personality. Six, he loses control. Seven, he is too angry. 8. He is mentally ill. 9. He hates women. 10. He is afraid of intimacy and abandonment. 11. He has low self-esteem. 12. His boss mistreats him. 13. He has poor skills in communication and conflict resolution. 14. There are as many abusive women as abusive men. 15. His abusiveness is as bad for him as for his partner. 16. He is a victim of racism. 17. He abuses alcohol or drugs. Let's explore each briefly, very briefly. Bancroft goes into detail, but I'm not going to be able to do that. So check out the book. Myth number one. He was abused as a child. This is the hat people, hat people myth. He was mistreated as a child by his mother or stepmother, and now he has this thing against women. This is a perfect way to escape responsibility because it makes you sympathetic toward him and lays the blame of his abusive behavior on some other person, some other woman. Research finds the link between suffering childhood abuse and abusing women to be weak. In fact, Men who are victims of childhood abuse are more likely to be violent towards other men. There was a revealing study that was done in which a researcher asked 
child sexual abuses if they had been sexually victimized as children. 67% of the men said yes, then the researcher informed them he'd be hooking them up to a lie detector test and asked the same question. The percentage of men who still answered yes dropped to a measly 29% from 67%. The other thing Bancroft asks men is, if you're so in touch with what abuse did to you, if those feelings are still so strong as to affect your present behavior, you should be less likely to visit the same abuse on another person, because you know what it feels like, right? Usually, after he points that out, they stop bringing up their alleged childhood abuse, because it was only ever an excuse, a way to gain sympathy and escape accountability. It was an excuse not to change. Myth number two, his previous partner hurt and mistreated him. This is a combination of hurt people hurt people and his wicked ex made him like this. According to the abuser, the things she allegedly did that made him this new horrible man may include things like cheating on him, trying to control him, expecting him to wait on her hand and foot, turning the children against him, getting him arrested, etc. Usually, when you dig a little deeper, none of this turns out to be true. In fact, usually, he is describing his own behavior towards her. So many women have had the misfortune of being with abusers and so he immediately gets sympathy. The stories he tells also excuse his abusive behavior. Oh, he is so jealous because his ex cheated on him. Oh, he loses his temper when you tell him to clean up after himself because his ex was so controlling. Oh, he keeps cheating on you because his ex cheating made him afraid of commitment. A man who was genuinely mistreated in a previous relationship would not be using that experience to get away with hurting you. The moment he uses that experience as an excuse to mistreat you, Stop believing anything he says about that relationship and if you can, track down that ex and talk to her. Myth number three, he's abusive because he feels so strongly about you. First, if he felt so strongly about you, he'd reserve his best behavior for you. Many people reserve their best, kindest behavior for their loved ones and partners. Do these people feel less strongly for their loved ones? No. Second, abusive men have other people they are close to. Do they also treat them poorly? No. Do they abuse their other loved ones? No. That tells you everything you need to know about this he feels so strongly about you that he's abusive myth. Myth number four. He holds in his feelings too much and they build up until he bursts. This is the one that claims he is just repressed. He just needs to get in touch with his emotions and learn how to express them so he doesn't explode. Here's what Bancroft says, quote, Rather than trapping everything inside, they, abusers, actually tend to do the opposite. They have an exaggerated idea of how important their feelings are. And they talk about their feelings and act them out all the time. When he feels bad, he thinks that life should stop for everyone else in the family until someone fixes his discomfort, end quote. It's not his feelings he's too distant from. It's his partner's feelings and his children's feelings. Myth number five, he has a violent, explosive personality. He just needs to get less aggressive. Let's call this one, the fascists wear black. It's the assumption that only certain types of men are abusers. The assumption is that abusive men come in one type, angry, aggressive. Meanwhile, the majority of abusive men are calm and reasonable in their other dealings and the gentle and sensitive ones can be vicious and even violent to their partners. This is also the one that assumes that only poor and educated types are abusive. Meanwhile, professionals and college-educated men have roughly the same likelihood of abusing women as anyone else. Class and racial stereotypes regarding abuse are particularly strong. Myth number six, he loses control of himself. He just goes wild. In one story, a woman tells Bancroft how her partner would just lose control and break everything. Then later, like a storm, it would pass and he'd be calm and embarrassed about what had happened. Bancroft asked her two questions. One, when he broke things, were they hers or his? If you guessed hers, go to the front of the class. Two, who cleans up the mess afterwards? If you guessed her, once again, go to the front of the class. It wasn't so berserk 
after all, and if he'd been really remorseful, he'd have cleaned up the mess he made. Men know what they're doing. They're aware of the tactics they're using and why they're using them. Bancroft says, quote, As we review the stories of my clients throughout this book, you will observe over and over the degree of consciousness that goes into their cruel, controlling actions. End quote. Always remember, men who have apparently lost all control find a way to calm themselves down when police arrive because they had never lost control in the first place. Self-control is not the issue. In fact, one abusive man told Bancroft about how he managed to escape arrest repeatedly. He talked about how calm his demeanor would be by the time the police got there. His partner, who he'd been abusing, on the other hand, would be the one who was out of control because of fear, but all the police would see is a calm man and an out of control woman. Myth number seven, he's too angry. He needs to learn anger management. Abusers are not abusive because they're angry. They are in fact angry because they are abusive. Their beliefs and thoughts produce fury, so no amount of anger management would work for them anyway. This is best expressed in this story. This woman's 12-year-old son had been missing for two days and she was distraught and focused on that alone, looking everywhere for him. Meanwhile, her new husband was slowly approaching boiling point until he eventually exploded yelling, I am so sick of being ignored by you. It's like I don't even exist. Go fuck yourself. Non-abusive men would never respond like that. They wouldn't be expecting to be catered to and would instead be focused on supporting and comforting their partner. The way abusive men think, the things they believe, are responsible for making them angry. It has nothing to do with their partner or their anger management skills. Abusive men don't have an anger problem. They have an abuse problem. Everyone gets angry, yet not everyone abuses. Perhaps he is most intimidating and most abusive when he is angry, but his abusive pattern is always operating, even when it's not so pronounced. Myth number eight. He's crazy. He's got some mental illness that he should be medicated for. Mental illness doesn't cause abusiveness any more than alcohol does. A mentally ill abuser has to separate those interrelated problems. They have an abuse problem and a mental health problem. Abuse can't also be a product of mental illness if they only abuse one person, their partner. For the abuse to be a product of mental illness, their destructive behaviors would be visited on everyone else in his life, not just confined primarily to his partner. Myth number nine, he hates women. So here's where I disagree with Bancroft. He says abusive men don't hate women because they often have close relationships with their mothers. Then he says what abusive men have when it comes to women is a disrespect towards them. He says that, quote, while a small number of abusive men do hate women, the great majority exhibit a more subtle, though often quite pervasive, sense of superiority or contempt towards females, end quote. Here's my thing, though. That sense of superiority, disrespect, contempt, belief that women should cater to their needs and are not worthy of being taken seriously are what we mean when we say abusive men hate women. Hate is not that feeling. It's this contempt, disrespect, and inferiority they view women with. So, what do you think? Are you with Bancroft? That is, abusive men don't hate women because they have a close relationship with their mothers or sisters or whoever else. Or are you with me? That that disrespect and contempt constitutes hate. Let me know in the comments, please. Myth number 10. He is afraid of intimacy and abandonment. First, all kinds of people are afraid of intimacy and abandonment who don't abuse their partners. Second, wife abuse is just as severe in cultures where there is no expectation of intimacy between husbands and wives, where marriage has nothing to do with real emotional connection. Third, some abusive men keep their distance the entire time, so they never even risk triggering whatever fear of intimacy they may have. Yet the abuse continues. Finally, Abusive men usually have their worst incidences of abuse after periods of mounting tension, not when they're closest to their partner to trigger their alleged fear of intimacy or abandonment. Myth number 11. 
He suffers from low self-esteem. He needs his self-image shored up. Abusive men are usually self-absorbed, expecting everyone to cater to them and bend over backwards to meet their needs. Thinking their issue is low self-esteem just turns even more of the focus on him and his needs which only makes him worse. He gets used to the attention and his demands only escalate. Bancroft makes a great point when he says, quote, Think for just a moment about how your partner's degrading and bullying behavior has hurt your self-esteem. Have you suddenly turned into a cruel and explosive person? If low self-esteem isn't an excuse for you to become abusive, then it's no excuse for him either. End quote. Myth number 12. His boss abuses him, so he feels powerless and unsuccessful. So he comes home and takes it out on his family where he can feel powerful. This is another version of hat people, hat people. And more of poor lower class people are more likely to be abusive. You know how it goes. The boss abuses the man, man abuses woman, woman abuses child, child kicks the dog. This is not true for many reasons including abusers count among their ranks good-looking successful men at the top of their fields. In fact, Bancroft says, quote, the more power these men have in their jobs, the more catering and submission they expect at home, end quote, which is why I personally think rich powerful men are extra dangerous. Anyway, Bancroft says, quote, in my 15 years in the field of abuse, I have never once had a client whose behavior at home has improved because his job situation has improved, end quote. Myth number 13. He has poor communication, conflict resolution, and stress management skills. He needs training. It's not that they don't have communication and conflict resolution skills. It's that abusers don't want to handle these kinds of issues non-abusively when it involves their partners. They resolve conflict and communicate perfectly well in other situations, such as at work. Myth number 14. There are just as many abusive women as men. Abused men are invisible because they are ashamed to tell. First of all, it's not easy for women to speak about their abuse either. This thinking underestimates how humiliating it is for women to reveal abuse and how much women also crave dignity. Second, when it comes to men claiming abuse, it's important to remember that abusive men commonly play the role of victim and most men who claim to be battered men are actually the perpetrators of violence, not the victims. Third, if men were being abused at nearly the same rate, neighbors would hear something. Police would be coming across these cowed, abused men. Bancroft says that about one-third of his physically abusive clients were arrested because a neighbor called the police. People often respond that women are more emotionally abusive in response to this argument. Bancroft recounts this story, quote, In the efforts to adopt victim status, my clients try to exaggerate their partner's verbal power. Sure, I can win a physical fight, but she's much better with her mouth than I am, so I'd say it balances out. One very violent man said in his group session, quote, she stabs me through the heart with her words, end quote, to justify the fact that he had stabbed his partner in the chest with a knife. To this, I reply with Bancroft's words, there certainly are some women who treat their male partners badly, berating them, calling them names, attempting to control them. The negative impact on these men's lives can be considerable, but do we see men whose self-esteem is gradually destroyed through this process? Do we see men whose progress in school or in their careers grinds to a halt because of the constant criticism and undermining? Where are the men whose partners are forcing them to have unwanted sex? Where are the men who are fleeing to shelters in fear for their lives? How about the ones who try to get to a phone to call for help but the women block their way or cut the line? Hmm? The reason we don't generally see these men is simple. They're rare. Claims of women's emotional abuse are gravely exaggerated. Myth number 15. Abuse is as bad for the man who is doing it as for his partner. They are both victims. Obviously, being an abuser is not a healthy lifestyle choice. Still, abusive men, unlike addicts, don't ever hit rock 
button. Their relationships and careers can remain successful regardless of their abuse. They also bounce back quickly from their abusive actions, which is never the case with victims. Abused women contend with emotional and physical pain, loss of freedom, self-blame, trauma, and so much more. Bancroft says, quote, an abuser can usually outperform his victim on psychological tests, such as the ones that are routinely required during custody disputes because he isn't the one who has been traumatized by years of psychological or physical assault. No one who listens carefully to the tragic accounts of abused women and then sees the abusers each week at a counseling group, as my colleagues and I have done, could be fooled into believing that life is equally hard for the men. End quote. So no, they're not both victims. Their suffering is nowhere near comparative. Myth number 16. He is abusive because he has faced so much societal discrimination and disempowerment as a man of color. So at home, he needs to feel powerful. More of the hat people, hat people, boss abuses man, man abuses woman, woman abuses kids, kids kick the dog. First, in the US, majority of abusive men are white. Many of them are well-educated and rich. So discrimination is not a central cause of abuse. Second, and here I'll quote Bancroft, quote, if a man has experienced oppression himself, it could just as easily make him more sympathetic to a woman's distress as less so, as is true for childhood abuse. End quote. Choose better. Myth number 17. The alcohol is what makes him abusive. If I can get him to stay sober, our relationship will be fine. Alcohol cannot create an abuser, and sobriety cannot cure one. Abusiveness can only be overcome by dealing with abusiveness. If a man is an alcoholic, they have two problems, alcoholism and being abusive, which is often a product of their beliefs and virtues. Brief recap. Here are the common myths about abusive men out there. 1. He was abused as a child. 2. His previous partner had him. 3. He abuses those he loves the most. 4. He holds in his feelings too much. 5. He has an aggressive personality. 6. He loses control. 7. He is too angry. 8. He is mentally ill. 9. He hates women. 10. He is afraid of intimacy and abandonment. 11. He has low self-esteem. 12. His boss mistreats him. 13. He has poor skills in communication and conflict resolution. 14. There are as many abusive women as abusive men. 15. His abusiveness is as bad for him as for his partner. 16. He is a victim of racism. 17. He abuses alcohol or drugs. Let's unlearn these lies. End of chapter 2